Hi, I'm Marna. This is the Dolls Rescue Channel, and today I am doing a CCC with Peace Craft Dolls with Tammy Polly. It is a contest, a challenge, and a collab. And what we're doing is dressing a Blythe doll uh, in a 1950s outfit. My 1950s outfit has taken a lot of different turns and <clears throat> I'm kind of starting over. Welcome to my pile of, gosh, I hope this works out. <laughs> I made the skirt. It's going to be a poodle skirt and I'm going to hope that I can do a, um, got a piece of cotton in my fingernail, uh, and Margaret type tight sweater for the top and a poodle skirt that I tried to do a little green pom-pom poodle on, you know, out of pom-poms. It was awful. It, it was really awful. So I thought, well, what I can do, and I went and uh, copied out some clip art and I'm gonna use this poodle. And what we're gonna do is take this Wonder Under some of you may have noticed that was not Wonder Under, but this is. Uh, is this one open? Yes, it is. Okay, this is how you use Wonder Under. On one side, it has a textured glue, and you use your iron for this. And the other side is smooth paper. And what you want to do is cut your wonder under in like a square. Now see, it's gonna be the size of that poodle. So what I wanna do is cut this. Oh, that's my good scissors. And I have the other one sitting here. A little bit bigger than what my poodle will be. Find a piece of this fabric. And what you want is the back of it. You wanna make absolutely certain you have the textured area. First thing I'm gonna do is press this fabric. Press it down. You want your fabric bigger than your piece of Wonder Under. Because if you iron this, whatever those edges are on will stick to your, um, when you iron it. So you wanna give it fabric all the way around. Then we'll cut this poodle out and I'll draw around it onto this paper and then we'll peel that back. I'll show you when we get there. I am using this printed pink fabric because I have the art skills of a two-year-old and kind of the cutting um, skills of a two-year-old. But I wanted to point out that on poodle skirts, on anything, earrings, anything, when you're using art, it always faces in towards the middle of a person or a doll. So I drew my doll, uh, my dog in this direction so that when it goes on the skirt, it'll be this direction because it's gonna be right here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this poodle out. Here's a fact you may not know about poodles. A lot of people think poodles are foo-foo dogs and their hair is cut like that to make them look pretty. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, French Poodle is a very strong, sturdy uh, sporting breed. It is actually the French um, retrieving dog for ducks and geese and water. And those seasons are in the winter. And that's why the, the poodles were cut the way that they were, so that the dog would have uh, buoyancy in the water, be able to get through the water, but still have enough fur so that it didn't uh, get cold in the water or while it was sitting in the duck blind. My doll's skirt is not together. Um, that's purposely so that I can still embroidery the leash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this up to her and decide where her little poodle needs to go. Let's get her turned around. And again, you want the poodle facing in. The poodle is not on the skirt uh, hem correctly. You want the poodle parallel. So that's where we're gonna put the poodle. It was kind of on the side. 
And what we're going to do is tear the paper off of the wonder under uh, very carefully. My nails are an absolute mess. We have been so busy here, uh, gosh, since before the doll, first doll show, and now I'm getting ready to go to two more doll shows in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I am while you're watching this video. Well, let me get this started and then I'll show you. Once you carefully get this started, you pull this around ever so slowly. Yeah, and you know what? how I'm heavy handed. So that you're not ripping the backing off of your uh, cutout. All right, so I want that right there. And I'm gonna keep my finger on that and move it over here to my iron. And normally, I would take a stitch around the outside of this. I'm not on this particular project um, for about six reasons, none of them that important. But see how much more the um, flowered pattern adds to the little poodle. I think it's cute. Okay, my next step is to put this together get a collar on the dog and a leash that loops. They always had a leash that looped up to the waist area of the skirt. And then white socks. In the 1950s and 60s, everybody, it was a big thing. Um, painted leather had come out. It was, it was more than dyed, it was a, a painted. And you could buy your dog a, a blue, red, green, I'm trying to think what other colors they had, matching collar um, with a leash that the handle was also this painted leather. So that's what I'm representing here. It was on a chain and I used a jump ring here for the doll's collar. So now I will hold this up to my doll, get the right size and sew it, put a snap in, and start the little bobby socks. And what I'm doing here is the J-Doll method. My sock is inside out and I have pinned exactly where I want to sew. So when I get this to the sewing machine, I will line that up, take the pin out, come down to that heel where this pin is, make my turn, and come all the way down. So I wanted to give you a close-up before I put it on the doll of the poodle, the collar, the um, leash handle, and the chain leash that would have been popular in the 50s. Uh, now I have to get my snaps on my shirt and we will go from there. How many of you remember the big fat pieces of yarn that were about, they were about, I, have, I don't know, maybe 12 inches and they had a, um, tie at each end, a knot at each end of the yarn, and they came in all colors, and you got two in a pack, and it was like 29, 39 cents. They were popular in the late 50s into the 60s, and I remember my mother saying, I am not paying whatever it was for two pieces of yarn. And I, oh, I wanted those yarn pieces. Anyway, this is our little girl who is ready for you to score one through 10 on her outfit and appearance. I used my Judy Garland doll that I made for the St. Louis Doll Show because she had the most correct makeup for the 50s. Actually, the eyebrows would have been a little different, but they were still pencil thin. Uh, she has on her little white socks and I don't know if you know this or not, but if you ever watch American Bandstand, the old American Bandstands, when the girls wore their poodle skirts, let me move their hand, her hands out of the way, and they twirled around, I won't be able to twirl her fast enough, they always twirled towards where the dog's head was, and when that skirt went out and they came around and the leash was there, it was called Walking the Dog. Please give us a score, one through 10. Be sure you go and visit all of the channels today that are showing us their 1950 dolls. The hashtag will be listed below. This is a collab with Peace Craft Dolls with Tammy, Polly, and I. 
that we opened as a challenge for any channel at all to show us their 1950 dolls, whether they made the costume or not. And it's also a contest again between she and I. So please score each of us on the outfits and the dolls. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. And here she is at the sock hop getting ready to dance and do the twist.